This is a quick overview of the basic tools and working environment available to you with Nisus Writer Pro. I'm going to touch very briefly on what some of the major tool elements are and how you can start customizing this environment to suit your own writing style. When you first open the application and create a new document, you'll see the toolbar at the top as the basic tools provided by Nisus Writer. This is the default layout and it can be changed, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, initially, we'll take a look at the views, and I have my working environment set up that when I open a new document, it opens in this draft view mode. And what that means is we're looking at primarily or only at text. There's no page breaks, there's no boundaries, page boundaries, margins, uh, headers and footers, things like that. Not gonna be visible in this view. But that does let me focus on writing text. Uh, the next view is the page layout view, or the page view as they call it. Um, this allows seeing the headers and the footers and editing them, looking at the margins, seeing how this document would look if it were actually printed on paper. The third view is the styles view, and this lets you take a look at what styles are defined for this document. You can preview the styles, you can modify the styles, you can add new styles if you'd like. And going back to the draft mode, the back and forward arrows let you go to prior and insertion points, locations that you've done editing before. And it, it's one quick way of moving around the document in a reasonable way, fashion. There's this highlighting tool, which lets you choose colors to highlight text in. This acts very much like a highlighter uh, that you might use on paper. So I'd like to remove that. You can use the list tool to create lists. So if you had a list of uh, elements, I'd like to turn that into a bullet list. It's easily done. I can undo that as well, use none. Uh, the list tool has several list styles. There's headings, there's lettered lists, numbered lists, so forth. The insert table allows inserting a table. You can describe first how many rows and columns you want to insert. The next two tools, shape and text box tools, will automatically change the view to page view. The shape tool is similar. You can insert a, uh, a shape like an arrow or triangles or circles if you need to illustrate a document. The text box lets you insert a text box, just like it says. This is a text area that is separate from the page text, so you can attach notes that the ultimate reader would ultimately see, as opposed to just notes for yourself or notes for reviewers. There is a navigator tool that turns on the navigator pane what typically is shown here is the table of contents. So if we had to find elements for the table of contents, this would help you navigate through the document as you were editing chapter one, chapter two, uh, various sections within those chapters. There is also the ability to show bookmarks, since again, bookmarks are not defined. Uh, there's nothing in this pane, but you can set bookmarks outside of the scope of table of contents and use that as a navigation. Uh, tool as well. Uh, you can use the comment tool to add new comments. So I wanted to add a comment here for myself or for some other reviewer that might be working in collaboration with me. I could do that. I can delete those comments. I am going to uh, get rid of the comments view. Also uh, another collaboration tool is this track changes. And track changes lets you do things like deleting a word or deleting a phrase or changing a, a phrase, a sentence, moving things around. And it keeps track of what has happened. So in this case, I deleted the word photography. Uh, the sentence no more, longer makes sense, but you can see what had, I had done. I can either click the check mark to accept that change or click revert to put it back. Now let's take a look at how we might customize this toolbar. In this case, uh, we're going to take a look at removing a, an item or two and possibly adding an item. 
So the first thing to do is right click or control click on the toolbar itself to get this context menu. Choose Customize Toolbar and you'll see the set of options that are available to add to your toolbar. The first thing I would like to do is remove something. I'm not going to use this back forward right now. So I'm going to remove the forward, remove back. It makes this list somewhat um, shorter. What I would also like to do is add comments. I do that a lot, working with comments, leaving notes to myself primarily. So I would like to turn that on fairly easily. And uh, we'll say that's done for now. There's one other thing I would like to do, and, and that is typically as I write documents and start finishing them up, I export them as PDFs. There was no PDF tool here, uh, but there is a PDF, export as PDF in the file menu. And we can say, you can see it here, but I'd like to have it available as a one-click option. So what I want to do is go to this, add a custom toolbar item, and you'll see all the uh, menu options available in this list. I'll click File, roll down to Export as a PDF. That's what I'm going to choose to do. What I would like to do now is add an uh, image for that item. And if you scroll to the right, you'll see there is a PDF image. I can add that item. I will click Done. And you'll see Export as PDF in the toolbar. And you'll see Export as PDF now as an option within the customization palette. Click Done. And now I've got a toolbar that's more suited to my style of working. I've got Export PDF as an option. Uh, I've got comments as an option. I don't have the forward backward. If in addition to these toolbar items, there is a palette or a drawer, it's called a tool drawer, that pops out to the side using this tools button. Uh, the default set, as we have here, essentially first is this writing palette group. Uh, there's a formatting palette group to let you look at and adjust fonts styles of fonts such as bold, italics, underline. Uh, you can change the paragraph alignment. You can change paragraph line spacing. Uh, various things done there. If you switch to the table group or table palette group, you can format tables, changing the border widths and colors, uh, cell backgrounds, and so forth. There is also a drawing tools palette group, much like the tables tools, let you change the formatting of uh, shapes that have been inserted into your document. So you, orange arrows can be changed to blue and so forth. You can control where these shapes line up within the text. They can be centered, they can be uh, floating attached to a paragraph. This uh, document palette group lets you take a look at and modify things like margins uh, header and footer spacing. You can define sections in here and what those sections might look like. And finally, you can create your own palette groups. If you want to create a palette group that uh, has only the tools that you use on a, on a regular basis, you can have a, a single item or a single group that has the three or four or five items that you use the most. And you can mix and match the way you, you find working to be the best for you. Similarly, you can make some changes in the tab uh, drawer or the, the uh, tool drawer. Um, in this case, if I wanted to add something to the styles tool group, I can click on this. Um, give myself just a little bit more room here so you can see the options. Show the palette library and you'll see there's a lot of items as tool palettes. There's all of them available here. So if for some reason I wanted to have margins available within the styles group, I can click on margins. This will give me a preview of what the margins palette looks like. Drag that over to that drawer item and drop it in. 
And if that's not where I want it to be, I'd like to be above language, I can move it there. Uh, I can move this off to the side and close the tool drawer entirely. And now I've got the margins palette available as I'm working uh, without having the tool drawer open. I'll reopen the tool drawer real quickly. When I close this palette, it will drop back into the drawer where it had been before. Now I'm going to remove that from the drawer because that's not where I want it. That was more for illustration than anything else. So there is a quick introduction to the uh, interface and how you might do some basic customization with the interface for Nicest Writer. Again, treat yourself. Go to the Nicest Writer Pro Help and take a look at the user's guide. And especially this getting started section and most especially the uh, Grand Tour. The Grand Tour will answer a lot of questions, give you a better sense of what you can do. But that's a quick way to get started, and I hope you enjoy using it. Check out the manual.